Welcome to the quick hitter version of Buckets, Boards, and Blocks. I'm Monica McNutt alongside King McClure. And this week, our featured discussion is with Washington Wizards insider Quentin Mayo. And he talks the sustainability of this team. <laughs> I think it is sustainable uh, because they're not, I don't think Wes Unso Jr. has these guys, you know, doing more than they're capable of. I think you're getting a lot of easy buckets and their offense is not predicated off of like, I need guys like Davies Burton just going nuclear every single night and shooting, you know, 10 for 14 from downtown. You're able to work inside. You're able to get the easy buckets and put pressure on the defense, especially and get to the free throw line. I think it is sustainable. Now, when there's more film on a team with the first year head coach, and we get around that all-star break and we come out of that all-star break, I think you start to, you might start to see some true colors and uh, because you have more film on what the team is good at, but I think it's sustainable because you still do have top in town, like Bradley Bill, who's a star and can't take over at any point in time. I'm so excited. DC needs this, like yeah. the, the culture in terms of the basketball fabric, like they deserve this. And so I'm, I'm in and hopefully um, hoping that this team is sustainable. Now, last week, Quentin, um, our friend Ava Wallace, who does a terrific job covering the Wizards, mm -hmm. had a terrific piece on Montrez Harrell after Bradley Bill lost his grandmother. And mm -hmm. I just, it had been a minute, I think, since I had heard a story like that in terms of the team bond come out yeah. of the Wizards camp. I mean, obviously, John did tremendous things in the community, as has Brad. Yeah. But the it feels like the level of camaraderie, and I don't know if it's maturity, I didn't particularly buy into John and Brad having an issue. I just thought they didn't necessarily work well together. Right. And that happens sometimes. Um, so when you look at this team, not the basketball stuff, what have you been able to see? That, that's a great point. That piece from Ava was excellent. Uh, I think one thing that these guys do share is that they want to be here. Like you even see Contavious Caldwell Pope when he came in. A lot of people think he's an interesting piece, but he was brought into D.C. to play beside his best friend with, with Bradley Bill. So like there's a connection already right there. You get Montrez Harrell coming into town. Montrez Harrell literally just wants to play basketball. And anybody that lets him get playing time, he's going to love them. And he gets that here. And uh, they let him be himself. And I think that also takes a lot of pressure off of a guy like Brad to be the leader because he's the best player. Because I don't think Brad as a leader is like that alpha dog mentality in leadership. He's more of so, more so, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. And if you can't match this energy, then, hey, bro, you might have to go ahead and sit on the bench. Trez knows what it, it's like to be an underdog. He literally has a brand called underdog. Like that's what he, that's what he does, but he loves to chirp. He can come in and be the vocal leader and they let him have that space. So everybody does have a defined role. And I think when all those things come together and you know what you're expected, what's expected of you and what you can contribute and everybody buys into their role and what other people's role, it, it makes, it makes everybody happier. Everybody loves to be loved. And even I'm, it's funny because uh, when Spencer Dinwiddie came to DC, he literally said, I just want to be loved like that. That's it. And, and it, it's funny to say that. And it sounds kind of cliche, but players have feelings, too. Like they're not just hoopers like it, it, you. You can go out there and drop 20 and then still be on the back burner. Like it kind of feels like people forgot about what Spencer Dinwiddie and Jared Allen and Joe Harris did before the, the big three came to Brooklyn. Like it, they just moving to the side for the brand new toy. And like, he's just sitting here like, bro, please. I, I, I've done a lot for Brooklyn as well. Before it was all this fancy Barclays. I was here. I was here. So I think that's kind of uh, the identity that a lot of these teams have brought to the team is that I love being here. I love my role. And let's, let's get some W's together. If you'd like to hear more from Quentin Mayo, myself and Monica, check out the full version of Buckets, Boards and Blocks presented by Pure Hoops Media. Also folks, <laughs> we're digital. Go check us out on YouTube.